John, this character you play, Jeremy Hunter, is fascinating. He is hardly one-dimensional, is he? No, he touches just about everything a man <laughs> can be, from being a soldier of fortune, a missionary or a monk, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is that fun to play a character like that? It's him? wonderful. wonderful. Uh, specifically after being a, such a villain for, for two years and then being stamped as a villain for many years in, uh, uh, in New York or Los Angeles, every every time there was a villain to play, they say, "Oh, Jean-Luc, that would be wonderful after <laughs> after doing Dracula." Yeah. So suddenly, it's a reverse of, of of character, and I like that. Yeah. Dracula, you I've read that you said that was a real turning point in your life. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, because I was um, b being in Canada and having the phone ring and, and at your place and say, "Would you consider coming and take over after Frank Langella on Broadway?" Mm. It's instant uh, change in your life, you know. <laughs> you glad? Pardon me? Are you glad that that yeah, happened? that's what I wanted to happen. Um, it's it's what you dream, but not being an, an American, not having the green card, not even speaking the language properly. You know how can you? you it's impossible now. You know to pack your suitcase and say I'm coming to New York and I'm going to make it, even though that you have a career of your own in, in another country. It's, there's no guarantee whatsoever that you're going to make it here. So when you're invited to do it and it works, you say, oh, Wow. It's interesting you gave up medicine, something very stable, for something that is not stable, and that is the acting profession. Mm -hmm. Why did you make that choice? Uh, at the beginning, when I, I, I wanted to be a, a doctor, uh, basically to help people and to bring some kind of healing on the people, um, I, 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 was doing, I decided to become an actor uh, because I was... I got a series at the age of 17, and I used that money to pay my university. <laughs> this is how it started, and I got caught in the process. And I realized that you can also reach people and maybe help people and, 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 and heal or touch people in a certain way by your, the acting you can do. You can make them laugh, you can make them think or, or cry or whatever. You're, you've, you did several soaps before you worked yeah. on My Children. I'm wondering about the perception of soaps in Canada growing up in Montreal. What did you think they were? Uh, or did you know, did the Canadian Broadcasting Company have a soap that you could relate they to? They don't have soaps in Canada. I think it's a unique genre in itself uh, in the world, I think only. I think they're starting to do it in, in England now. Uh, I think there's going to be some in Canada that's going to start in about two years, but that's typical American uh, uh, showbiz. So what did you think? I didn't know. I mean, for me, it was a work. I mean, I don't make difference between uh, doing uh, theater, film, uh, daytime film, nighttime, uh, so whatever it is. I mean, it's acting. Acting is acting. Um, I didn't want to sign. I was advised not to take any job. That I, I, right, uh, right after Dracula, I got offers to do series everywhere. Um, my agent says, no, you don't do that because, you know, it's going to take our time to do more uh, Broadway shows, more films, and I was in demand in Europe then. And I, was, I followed their advice, and I realized after a while that it's, it's wrong, because it's a good job. It's a wonderful way of reaching 27 million people I'm every just day. thinking about <laughs> years ago when the perception of acting in a soap was not nearly as, um, as good as it is now, but now it's a national pastime, nighttime, daytime. Well, people on, uh, most of the people now think that the nighttime television is not as good as it used to be, and would rather tape what they like in the afternoon and be able to see it at night rather than watch what's at night. Hmm. Uh, it's a fascinating story, but I travel a lot in the, in the country now doing promotion for the show and, and for myself, uh, and that's what they, every, everyone is doing. How do the people that meet you react to you? Do they believe uh, that you are the character as they do for so many other people? They're, 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 intri they're intrigued because, you know, he's the man of Erica Kane and he's mm -hmm. the, the good Jeremy Hunter. They'll call you Jeremy right away. They're not Jean, 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 you know, they're not sure about that, but it's, <laughs> Je <laughs> it's Jeremy. That's right. Yes, it's also very nice. Very, very gentle. And they, Playing they like this him. love triangle I mean, with Natalie and, and Erica, and it's, a, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful storyline. We're going to use this weekend to go on a remote and to do uh, two days of filming of uh, Fox Hunt. I mean, 3.45 a.m. call in the morning oh. to, for shooting all day. It's, it's about discipline. It's, about, it's a choice. You know, when you sign on the dotted line to do a series, a daytime series, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And no one is twisting your arm to sign this contract. The money is extraordinary. The exposure is wonderful. You have to sacrifice something. And for a time being, you devote yourself. Jackie Babin, the producer of this show, was very nice and very clear about what she wanted of me when I signed the contract. She says, we want you to go back to the stage. We will try to get you as much out as possible, but your first devotion is here to all my children. After a while, you realize what it means in terms of energy that you have to give to sustain day after day, mm -hmm. weeks after weeks, and months after months, the same 
uh, uh, clarity in, in, in your head. You cannot go and party at night. I mean, there's mm -hmm. all these things about the wonderful life of, uh, of actors and actresses having in, 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 uh, in nightlife and the, the cabaret and all that. If you want to be serious, you know, you want to get up at 5 in, in, in the morning to be ready and start working here, give 12 and 14 hours a day of um, clarity here, <laughs> memorizing the lines and be bright and about all that time, there's not much time after that. Routine, routine, routine that exists, you know, after a while it, getting, it gets easier to learn the lines, it gets easier to get up in the morning, but still, you know, your energy goes there first. I'm glad you explained that because I think the perception is not of that way in the audience. The audience doesn't see it that way. They see you uh, fresh, they see you alive, they assume you're You see, pampered. when we start at 7 in the morning uh, and you, they put the makeup on your face by 11 in the morning, by 4, th what time is it now? Four? It's 3.30, 3 almost 4. Th but that Jack, Jack Coffey is directing today, it usually goes a little faster, but usually around 4.30, this is when we start taping the show. We've been working in the morning on blocking the camera, rehearsing, mm -hmm. getting everything ready, costume, makeup. I mean, all the details have been taken care of. Now it's the end of a normal day for everyone. Everybody's mm -hmm. not going to go home. It's the end of the day. We're going to start to do it. And that's the time we're going to be in front of the camera. We have to be bright and perfect and no mistakes. I yes. wonder if the producer also wrote into the contract, please, John, do not lose your French accent. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's I don't charming, want, though. You I know it lose. is. Yeah. You know, the women in this country, I mean, I, I know that when they tune in, and the men that yeah. watch All My Children, I mean, it, you are such a romantic man. Well, it must I give am. a lot of people <laughs> a lift, you know? Yeah, I had a big problem with that for a while. You know, I said, if I can get rid of that accent because I won't oh. get anywhere. Till one day, Robbie Lenz, who was one of the, the dean of the agents of, of New York, would say, but he says, my boy, if you lose that accent, you will be like all the others. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know? That's true. And I thought, so, okay, as long as I can get clear in my enunciation, I'll get away with it. You do a wonderful thing with this radio show that you broadcast back to Canada, Perceptions of America, much like Alistair Cook has done for years. To the well, that's very nice of you to say that. I'm not Alistair Cook. But it's Cook. lovely to share perceptions of another culture in another, another country. Mm -hmm. um, what are those? What do you share? Uh, of course, it, it's lim uh, there's a limit to it. It's basically on the art world of what's happening in, uh, well, actually in the United States, because since I travel a lot, I pick everywhere I mm. go, whatever, and I form, uh, build some shows. But it's basically in New York, what's going on, and there's so much things going on here. Uh, I'll, up there in Canada, they are fascinated with what is the city of the world uh, doing this week mm. and so you bring and you choose you just so much things it's to a do. lovely way to share yeah. and this home that you live in uh, built in 1820 with five acres outside of Montreal is that a good sense of balance in your life to have a place like that to go to I think so I bought it um, well for, for one thing when I bought the place it was uh, it has been abandoned for a while it's a flour mill mm. with a waterfall in the living room and all that oh. but it has been abandoned so when I bought it uh, my f you know you're a young kid and you take your father you say papa Look what I bought. And uh -huh. my father said, are you out of your mind? <laughs> you, you idiot. You Everything's going to leak. And <laughs> money and that. And I said, well, you'll see. And I've decided to restore it myself, oh. which I did. It took five years of my life, and I did it. And, and, and I was very uh, gratified because the government decided to uh, uh, name it a mo uh, his historical monument when it was oh, over. So there's a plaque is on it now. So that's very nice because you want to live in a city. I, I live in New York. It's the best place if you want to really live city. Yeah. And uh, in the country, I live outside of Montreal, which is the country is parallel to Vermont. So you have the, it's the same. same but it's thing. a lovely thought to cre to save something that's old and create new things. Also, it's a well, lovely I like thing that. to I do. Like the idea, yeah, yeah. It's it's lovely meeting you, John. Lovely meeting you. And congratulations and Thank continued you. good luck on this show. Thank you. And I wish you the best. And you're with us today. You're oh, an actress with us today. I'm loving it. Yes. You know what I'm we're really sorry that it wasn't a love scene that we're doing together, but well, maybe we next talk time. To the producer. We could yes. before the day is over. I do wonder with blondes. John, let's go. I'll go with you downstairs. Yeah, just go now. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs>